Well, Seth, I, I just uh, hated her job. So you you grow up. Your parents are uh, sort of songsters, hipsters, hippies. Probably not a lot of cash coming in. Not the not a lot of cash. No, no. My father was a teacher. My mom was a secretary. So I mean, yeah, there was there was no cash. Mm-hmm. But they instilled the love of the arts <clears throat> yes, to the children. Yeah, yeah. And and did they give you a feeling that you could do? They wanted you to be creative. Yeah, yeah. There was there was never pressure to be a doctor or, or a lawyer or, or and. Uh, you could pursue whatever creative endeavor you you wanted. That mm-hmm. that's what they worked on. Yeah, I mean, you know, w- yeah, there was a balance. I mean, it got to a point where I was, you know, drawing the fucking Smurfs in my textbooks, and, right. and that got out of hand, and so you know they slapped my wrist a little bit. But said, "Move on to Marmaduke." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, so, something that has a little more staying <laughs> power. Time to evolve. So yeah, come yeah. on, grow up now. <laughs> but 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 they recognized you had a, a talent and at least a, a will to do this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no yeah. I mean they, they were they were both working three jobs to to put me through uh, you know art school. So it's mm-hmm. they, they they got it. Did you learn a lot at art school? I did actually. Yeah, yeah. I went to the Rhode Island School of Design and. Uh, Hugely, hugely beneficial in 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 developing uh, the the basics of, of of the style that that I still use for the animated shows that I do. And when you graduated, then how does it work? Now you you went to work for Hanna Barbera, right? Yeah. So you mm-hmm. came out here yeah. shortly after graduation. Mm-hmm. Do they do some headhunting? Do they come out there and go uh, draw Yogi and Boo Boo for they, me? And let's see, <laughs> see what we got did, here. Draw, draw Squidly Diddly and Doggy sure. Doggy and yeah, they they uh, and and the Partridge Family twenty two hundred A D. Can I ask you, uh, by the way, in the cop out name department, Squidly Diddly yeah. or Grape Ape? They, uh, what worst what, what worst cop out? Like Squid, in the I got nothing Squid, department. Squidly Diddly because I feel uh, like I feel like Grape Ape was at least. You know, okay, he's a gorilla and he's purple. How about Hair Bear Bunch versus Squidly Diddly in the cop out name department? Hair Bear Bunch, they still got the funny afros. You know, Squidly Diddly, what? He's just like an octopus or something? I don't know, but making a name that rhymes, a, uh, no, nay, a sound that rhymes with Squidly they, 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 after you've named him Squidly does not count as a they, name. I would uh, wholeheartedly agree. They, well, they they were clocking out at 3.30 in the afternoon. Right. Though, you know? And must have been drunk by noon because it was like Squidly. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what'd, Diddly? what'd you draw? Something Squidly. Nah, yeah, squidly. Yeah. What rhymes with squidly? Diddly. Yeah, there but it is. Is diddly <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. No. All right. Move on. Moving on. He Next. And he's only got, he's not, what, what is, that's like, I got, one, I got, two, three, four, five, I count six arms. Well, yeah. Seven. But, all right. But Stewie only has four fingers. Right? I don't know who that guy is in the white, but I bet he was, I bet squidly diddly was always making trouble for that guy. Yeah. Whoever that it looked is. like a troublemaker. Looks like the guy who would <laughs> swallow his whistle in. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There was always a sort of Mr. Mooney. It was just a very uptight white guy who was like, what's going on on my ship? You know, like, <laughs> swallow his... That's a convention right. from something. I don't know what, yeah, but Yeah, from Frosty the Snowman. Is yeah, it? Is yeah, that what happened? the cop swallows the whistle. Oh, my God, that's great. Yeah, and there's the grape. <laughs> There's the great ape. Yeah, but they used it. They would use the... There were certain jokes. Like, we had, like, eight jokes. Like, there was, as, the, as yeah. I've always spoken about, there was souffle humor for a while. Act one. Don't, don't slam the door. Timeless. I have a souffle. <laughs> Timeless souffle. I humor. have a souffle. And at some point, the kids would come home and slam their books down. Yeah, and the door, yeah. Not the souffle. Not yeah. the, and, but or slapping. At the end of act three, the souffle would fall. There was that. There was... Uh, Hobo seeing something that he shouldn't have looking at the bottle of booze and dumping, <laughs> Pouring it, and out. dumping exactly. it out. I would argue that that wow. was the reason to double down Jesus. on the booze. Just, yeah. Shaking the head, yeah. dumping the booze out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. X's for eyes. Right. There there was the um there there was this uh well there was all the good foot stomping humor, like where the guy was right in the middle of telling the story and the other guy would stomp on his foot, he'd yell <laughs> ow, and then there was this one too. Where we come up with an excuse. See, you say, Allison, you, you say to me and Seth, where were you? Why are you home so late? And I say, we were volunteering at the orphanage. And then Seth says, we were at the library. And then we look at each other. And then I know something's up. Then we flip them. Then we flip them. We're, then, we were taking the orphans to the library. That's <laughs> right, what we were right. doing. Right. And then I stomp on his foot. Right? Yeah. And then I'm like, the souffle. Yeah, there were there was about <laughs> nine jokes, and mm-hmm. they just would put them in different orders mm-hmm. and put them in different sitcoms and put them in different. There's a cartoons. there's a great there's a great old film when McGilla Gorilla came out, and I, I have a copy somewhere that Hanna Barbera put out. Uh, I, I'm assuming it was for advertisers, and it was hosted by George Fenneman. 
from a Groucho Marx show, mm-hmm. and and they <gasps> had they just had <laughs> they had like phony footage of like the writers' room of Magilla Gorilla, clearly all staged. And it's a bunch of guys in suspenders and ties, and they're looking at a picture of Magilla on the wall, and and they're like, Magilla, you're a big help. Why don't you tell us where you're supposed to live? Well, what about the jungle? And what's funny about a gorilla in the jungle? <laughs> and, and they eventually come up with the idea that that the you know that, that he he lives in this pet store and 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 he keeps the owner go, going broke uh, uh, buying bananas. I could do six banana stories myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go into this kind of wallow where it's like, ah, oh, you take them to the circus and you put them up on the moon and you take them out west and all the same cartoon stories they used to do over and over. Right. It's it's hilarious. If you can if you can find it anywhere, it's Try one of the to, greatest try things to YouTube ever seen. It. And yeah. Magilla Gorilla, marginally better than Squidly Diddly or not any better? A retarded push? Pro- probably a better premise. Yes, but in, well, at least in name, it has one in word title. that has yeah. a reference to the real world. Magilla means squid, something. And squidly gr- and diddly, <laughs> neither of them. Those are both nonsense. Yeah. Good point. So now you, you do they come cherry pick you? Do they come out to the art institute and go, hey man, we got a we got a regular Beethoven over here with a fountain pen? They at the time they they were yeah they they, they <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> that's good. That's close enough. They they uh they they had a, a program that they had launched at that point called What a Cartoon. And it was, uh, it basically allowed like green, you know, animation students who had never done anything before in their life mm-hmm. to um, to do their own stuff. To you know, right. you know, instead of beginning by working on, you know, the Flintstones or or you know, Fred and Barney Cops or whatever the hell it was. Right. You know, you you went in there and you did, did your own stuff. And so I did a student film while I was there that called that, Tuna Puna. Called Tuna Puna. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a mischievous yeah. tuna fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. <laughs> called whack, called wacky quack, and uh, and they bought it, and um, and they they you know I was I was in a I was in a community where there was a lot of very artistic stuff being done, and and I was just you know making shit jokes. So, so they it. got they got you, and they bring you over to Hanna Barbera. Yeah, you're yeah. you're at what age at this point? Uh, it was about at the time I was I just turned twenty two. So you're wow. young. Yeah. And uh, and a good example for all the uh, folks listening out there of it would have been a, a waste of time for a, for Seth MacFarlane to enter just a four year university and do you know be well rounded and all that kind of stuff. He obviously had a calling. It was drawing Smurfs on a peachy folder. His parents saw that and directed him. They put took took that and pointed in a direction. L- later on, you you became well rounded. I'm sure, yeah, but yeah, yeah. at this point, let's focus on what what you want to do and what you're good at. So you do that. Now you're 22 and you have a gig out here in Hollywood, essentially. And you're out at Hanna-Barbera. Is that when they were off of Coanga? Yeah, yeah. They were right at uh, the base of Universal City. Mm-hmm. In that, in that big, that, and that building's still there. I don't know what it is now. but And you, 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 you show up there and you just start working on the stuff that they're working on. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, st- I started, I did a short called Larry and Steve. That was, and it was based on my student film. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if you go back and listen to it, it's basically the same voices as as Peter and Brian. Just mm-hmm. that, you know, they're just different right. characters. But, um, and uh, you know, then once I was done with that, they put me on uh, Johnny Bravo. Sure. Um, and w- during that time, I was uh, uh, th- th- there was a new head of development that had taken over at Hanna Barbera. This guy Adam Shapiro, and he was a very savvy New York executive, and he wanted to get them back into the prime time business. Mm-hmm. And you know, I said, well, you know, I got this thing, Family Guy, that I've been kicking around. Now they, they did the Flintstones and like the Jetsons yeah. and Prime Time. And mm-hmm. who did Wait Till Your Father Gets Home? That was also Hanna Barbera. So there were there were, you know, uh, you know, the Simpsons weren't the first guys to do Prime Time animation, although it feels that way now. But there was stuff back yeah. in the day. Yeah, I mean, it was a long time. You know, the the, the Flintstones was on what in the sixties, and then it went yeah. off the air, and there was really nothing. In prime time, I mean that's. Wait that's, till your father gets home. I think was it didn't last long. It felt like a long time though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A wasn't that good, and B I was nine. Tom Bosley, so, so right? It feels like a long time. Yeah, I guess so. And uh, maybe Burns of Burns and Shriver. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember the yeah. other voiceover actors on that on that show. <laughs> but it was basically, and it was an animated All in the Family, but yeah. not not quite. Not Tell quite me about up. that, Grandpa would, yeah. Corolla. Yeah, but it seemed, it was it was really just kind of a direct <laughs> rip off of All in the Family, and it felt pretty good at the time. It's better than watching Maud, 
for, <laughs> yeah, for me yeah. when I was nine. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's not, there's not, there's not. I mean, I. But it'd been a good uh, twenty years since yeah. anything was on. Oh yeah, I mean, you, you could say that when the Flintstones went off the air, there was really nothing until the Simpsons that that was that vital in, right. in the primetime animation medium. Right. And so you, you got a young hip guy who wants to get Hanna Barbera mm-hmm. back, yep. back on the prime time. He took he took me over to, uh, to to Fox to meet meet the executives and uh, uh, and to pitch the show. And it was there's a big there's a big mural of um, uh, the the uh, lightsaber fight between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader from oh. yes. Empire Strikes Back over on the Fox lot. Sure, there you go. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, and he said to me, I'd never been over to the Fox lot, and he said to me, all right, so I'll meet you over on the lot, and uh, let's see, where should we wish we hook up? There's a big painting of, um, it's got like Captain Kirk fighting swords with Buck Rogers. I'll meet you underneath that thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, I got there, and I was like, okay, that must be what he's talking right. about. And uh, you met, and you know, what age at this point? Um, about 23. About 23. So you've just been out here for about a year. Yeah. And uh, you go in there, and you pitch the family guy? Yeah. 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 And uh, now, are you showing pictures of Stewie or yeah, are you doing the voice? Yeah, I, I, a little bit of both. I had, I had, I came in with some sketches mm-hmm. with, you know, what is like a basic pilot pitch package for something like mm-hmm. that. You have here's here are sketches of each character. Here's a brief description of each character. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a synopsis of the pilot story, and here are five little paragraphs of what subsequent episodes might be. Now, did folks try to talk you out of Stewie and the English accent or no. Brian, a dog who speaks? Mm-mm, no, it, it's, it's, fu- it's funny. With, um, with Fox, it was the opposite. I, mean, I went in there thinking, our Peter is going to be the one that they respond to. Right. But uh, they kind of surprised me. By, it was, we, we, Stewie, we like Stewie. That's, it's kind of unusual. And that was a character that you know, amused me, but I just kind of thought of it as like a side character that right. – that, that, wouldn't necessarily, you know, he'd be kind of a, a secondary player. Right, so nobody ever tried to talk you out of the sort of starting lineup of the family guy. No, no. And uh, at that point, do you do an animatic, as uh, I've learned about now in this well, business? Well, at, at that time, I mean, it, it, you know, I was still, I, I had no primetime credits and very few television credits to begin with. I mean, I just worked, you know, just been Hanna-Barbera. So they said, listen, if, you know, we'll give you like $50,000 for a budget. Um, you know, an average budget for an animated pilot is, you know, I mean, it's it's in the hundreds of thousands, and sometimes right. as high as a million. And they said we'll give you fifty grand if you can do a pilot for fifty grand. And I said, yeah, great, great, great. So I spent like six months just animating like crazy at at home in my mm-hmm. apartment. And after six months, presented them with like a, a fifteen minute, very crudely animated pilot, but the jokes were were there, mm-hmm. and they bought it, and then. You know, I, mean, I had no life during that time. I was literally dawn till dusk. I was working on that, and and it was it was during a time when <clears throat> when um, was it Warner Brothers and A O? What was it? That, whatever that whatever that big time Warner merger mm-hmm. was. So nobody knew what to do with any of us. Right. So you had people sitting around getting paid, and there was no work for us to do. So you know, you'd go home and and do, do, do your you, own thing. Do you think you could uh, summon that again? I mean, do you think you have another one of those in you? I I hope so. I, I, I don't I, mean another good idea. I mean another s- sit in a shitty apartment and not do anything but well r- animate stuff. Maybe not in a shitty apartment, but oh yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 skill is. I mean that that stays with you forever. It um, does. Yeah. I mean, I still I still do a fair amount of drawing on a daily basis. Not as much as I when you used when to you do. when you introduce a new character to any one of the series you have on. Do you draw it initially and Sometimes. then saw? Sometimes, if it's somebody, if it's somebody who uh, is going to be significant and who we're going to see a lot of, then most of the time I'll do at least I'll do a pass. I'll say this is what I want him to look like. Mm-hmm. If it's something that's really bizarre and I have something very specific in mind, then I'll do it. Um, but you know, about a third of the time I'll do that these days. And, and creatively, we when we spoke over the phone, you're telling me you're getting ready to start doing a feature. Yep. Directing a feature, written a feature, yep. and live action for the most part. Um, so, is the idea creatively to just sort of keep moving and keep evolving and keep metamorphosizing? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, Family Guy is 
I mean, yeah, you know, the, the show continues to, to do great in, in season eight. We're just starting season nine. I mean, the ratings are still 